Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Matthew Bivens here, and welcome to the Having It All podcast. Yes, I'm excited for you to be hanging out with me here today on this Wednesday in August. And I have to admit, I have to own the fact that I did not publish this episode yesterday at our normal weekly publish time. And the truth is, I just got overwhelmed. Sometimes it happens in life. Sometimes we got a lot of stuff on our plate and something has to give. And yesterday I just made the decision that my energy level, the energy that I really wanted to deliver on this episode, I just didn't have it yesterday. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to go against what I what I play for in this podcast, which is to publish every single Tuesday. And uh, I'm going to publish this one on Wednesday. And I am going to throw myself at the mercy of you all listeners and uh, and ask for a little bit of leniency And uh, just allowing, you know, allowing the flow of things. So I appreciate you being open and allowing to me publishing one day late. And, uh, you know, hope you get a little bit of a glimpse behind the scenes of uh, of what it takes to produce a show like this. Because it's not easy. It's a lot of work. But I love it. I love it. I absolutely love talking to you. Because, you know, the message that we are, that all of us are living out, you know, we are living out this message of, of creating and experiencing an abundant, loving life. And I mean, I get so excited talking about that stuff. I do. And, you know, just being able to to hop behind the mic every week and uh, and know that you're listening and that you are absorbing the message and learning from my breakdowns and, you know, taking the insights and then applying them into your life, that is the coolest damn thing I can think of. And so... If this is your first time listening to the show, welcome. <laughs> you just got a little bit of a glimpse of, uh, of, of the level of personal accountability and transparency that I like to have on this show. So I appreciate you hanging out and trying this out because I know you are uh, investing a bit of your time in something new. So thank you. And if you are a returning listener, tons of gratitude to you for being a part of this community, for continuing to show up for yourself by surrounding yourself with empowering information and empowering energy. I like to believe this podcast is is empowering energy. So thank you. We got a cool conversation for you today. We're talking about surrender, talking about this idea of what does it mean to surrender. And I'm going to be sharing a story when I uh, when I surrendered in in a manner that uh, I don't want to repeat. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about that story in a little bit. Uh, but I want to kick things off today with some magic. That's what we do every week. We start off by talking about magic, which is your ability to influence yourself, others, and life to create something extraordinary. You are creating magic all the time, every single day. But I bet that you aren't aware of it. And through talking about magic, we are increasing our awareness of ourselves as magic makers. So that when we look at life, it's just we're looking through a different lens. It's through a lens of of possibility and creativity and abundance. So that's what we're doing here. So my magic is that Sarah, Maya, and I have recently returned from a really amazing seven-day vacation, which we don't do very often. We were gone from Friday to Friday, and we were in Florida. So Sarah's family is from Florida. Sarah was born and raised in Florida. Half of my family is from Florida, and uh, I spent a lot of time down there. So going back down to the Sunshine State is like returning home for me. And uh, we had a really amazing trip. But the magic I want to focus on was our time in Disney World. So uh, we went to Disney World, and it's the second time we took Maya down there. And I have these these uh, silicon bracelets, kind of like Live Strong bands, and they have these different um, affirmations on them. So when we went to Disney World, I intentionally wore two of them that said, open to receive and stay in the moment. 
because <clears throat> I wanted to be in a state of receiving. I, I just felt like, you know what? The universe wants to bless us with things while we're here in Disney World. So let me remind myself to stay open. And then, of course, when you're on vacation so many times, that vacation goes by like that in a snap. So I wanted to remind myself to stay in the moment. And what was so magical is that all day long in Disney World, we received things. It was so cool. And it started off by getting uh, people giving us seats when we were riding on the monorail. And then we went to a restaurant. It was raining in the park. So we we ducked into a restaurant, got some food, and it was absolutely packed. People were standing everywhere, no seats to be had. And uh, we were gifted with a couple of seats at a table. Someone said, oh, no, no, I'm not using the table here. Go for it. And uh, that was amazing. It was great to receive that. And then we got front seats and rides, you know, people would would uh, allow us to sit in the front. And then uh, we were gifted dinner. Somebody actually gave us uh, gave us dinner to cook and, and we were able to take it home and um, for free, totally for free. So, you know, it's magic. It really was magical to, to uh, influence life in that way. And, you know, I used those bracelets and those mantras to just remind myself to be open, be open to receive. Because it goes back to what the show is about, living an abundant, loving life. And the universe is abundant. It simply is. And we choose to align with that abundance or not. Or we choose to recognize things in our life as abundant or not. And sometimes we get an abundance of things we don't want. An abundance of headaches. An abundance of stress. An abundance of debt. But we also can experience an abundance of the things that we really do want. So I just practiced that when we were at Disney World. I'm like, I am open, I'm going to receive, and I'm going to choose to view the universe as abundant in ways in which I want because I could have so easily overlooked all the things that people gave us, overlooked people giving us their seats, overlooked people giving us their tables, overlooked people giving all these compliments to us and, and talking about Maya and just, you know, people were just showering us with, with attention and love and I could have easily overlooked that. So I'm sharing all of that because as you conclude today's episode, when you start going out into the world, start looking for things that you want to experience. You want to experience money flowing your way, open yourself up to it. Start seeing what people are giving things to you. You want to experience affirmations flowing your way, open yourself up to it. Start noticing when people are making comments and sending love your way, because it's happening all the time. We just got to tune our antenna to those frequencies. So that's my magic. I dig it. Awesome. I want to transition into some listener love because you all have been amazing in your outreach and in your questions, in your feedback, and in the conversations we've gotten into. And um, I've loved all the conversations we've gotten into on Instagram recently. So uh, recently got a message from Lenny on Instagram. Lenny, I appreciate you and uh, I've really uh, dug our conversation and uh, Lenny, you were you commented on the episode that I recently did talking about balance, and and uh, the title of the episode was "How to Balance Out Your Health and Fitness in a Holistic and Sustainable Way." So, Lenny, I'm I'm happy that that episode resonated with you, and that you got some takeaways that you can apply to your life. That's awesome. If you want to reach out to me on Instagram, if you want to connect, get into a conversation, just talk, whatever it is. Uh, I'm available. Matthew underscore Bivens on Instagram. You know, I I like to to make myself uh, available to have these conversations and to connect because I'm a a man who loves connecting. So let's do that. Uh, Before, what we got? One more thing before I jump into the episode is that we are at the end of the August Trust Challenge. So it's been an amazing month. Uh, it has not been an easy month. <laughs> I know that for myself, and I know that because I've talked to several of you who are participating in the Trust Challenge, and you've shared with me um, that it was more difficult than you thought it would be. If you're wondering, what the heck am I talking about? For the month of August, a, a large portion of the Having It All community um, made commitments to show up for themselves every single day for the month. 
and to make a deposit into their personal trust account. And you do that by committing to a small habit, say, uh, reading for 15 minutes a day, and doing that habit every single day, no matter what. No matter what emotions come up, no matter what circumstances come up, you stick to your commitment and you show up for yourself. And so we've been doing that through the month of August, and we have three more days, including today. This, uh, this challenge ends on Friday. So um, I appreciate everybody who's been participating and you know whether or not you've been 100% consistent, just the fact that you are in it and that you are showing up and that even when you stumble, you get back on it. Even when you might miss a day, you, you, you quiet those voices that are just wanting to berate you and criticize you and judge you for not being able to keep your commitment. And you say, hey, listen, I got no time for you because I'm getting back on. And you jump back on. That's beautiful. So I want to receive some feedback. I want to learn what you've liked about the challenge, what you didn't like about the challenge, uh, what you would change. Um, I'm going to be doing it again, uh, and I want to improve it. I want to be a better experience from, from everyone. Uh, and I really want to know, what did you learn about yourself during the process? You know, this process of showing up for yourself. What did you learn about yourself, and what will you take away as you move into September and into the fall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a video on my Instagram and uh, I'm going to kind of put this out there again. And I want you to go there and leave a comment. Leave some comments. Um, Again, just feedback. Help me improve this. Like this is a community thing. And I'm really wanting the, the participation of the community and making this better because this trust challenge is so, so powerful when we connect to the big reason why we do it, we do it to show up for ourselves. We do it so that we can count on ourselves. Because when you cannot count on yourself, that bleeds into all your other relationships and that impacts all all of your other roles. When you are unable to count on yourself to show up powerfully in a situation, then all sorts of interesting things happen. So that's what the Trust Challenge is about. Give me your feedback. There's gonna be an Instagram video. And if you're on the mailing list, you'll also get an email. And that's it. That's it. That's, that's enough with the announcements and stuff. Let's get into the to today's conversation. So today we are talking about surrender. And man, surrender is such, such an interesting word, first and foremost. Um, my context around the word surrender was not very powerful for many, many years. When I started working with a coach, when I started working with my health coach, um, and when I started to really be a part of a health and fitness and wellness community, I would hear the word surrender a lot. You would hear things like surrender to healthy feedback and surrender your ego and surrender to the things that you don't know and surrender to the universe or surrender to God, all of those different things. And like I said, I had a really difficult time um, like that, those messages didn't resonate with me. I, I had a difficult time connecting with those messages because for a long, long time, the word surrender was a weak word with me. It meant giving up. Surrender meant to give up. Surrender meant to give in. And I would ask myself, like, why do I want to be giving up or giving in? Why do I want to be doing something out of weakness? That's the context that I used to have. Today, my context is so much different. And I use the word surrender quite a bit. If you've listened to any of the episodes on faith, then you've heard me talk about surrender. Faith being trust and surrender. If you listen to multiple episodes of this show, period, then, then you've totally have heard me say the word surrender and use the word surrender in, in different ways. So what I want to do for you all today is give you an alternative context for surrender, a context that will empower you, a context that can help you to create a more enjoyable experience of life. Because when you surrender, when you let go, when you don't need to be in control, you allow things to flow and you trust the process, some pretty incredible things can happen. 
All right, I promised a story, and I'm going to give you a quick story. When I was 19, I was arrested. Like a lot of kids, I made some decisions that weren't the smartest at the time, obviously. And um, when I was 19, I was arrested for underage drinking. So I was at a party with a bunch of friends. We were doing some wild stuff. And uh, it was an apartment party. And it was like the third floor of the apartment. And I totally remember stepping out in the balcony. I was holding my glass of something, some brown liquor. And uh, I look over the railing and I just see a line of cop cars coming at us. And uh, by the time I grabbed my buddies and we ran down, we get to the bottom of the stairs and there's just police everywhere. Uh, it, it felt like a raid. It felt like something you see in a movie. Uh, police were all over the place and they were telling folks to surrender. They were telling folks to get on the ground. And there was dozens of kids at the party, so people were scattering all over the place. And um, the police were meeting them with, with a bit of force. So I saw kids get checked up against walls. I saw a kid get like body slammed, like you might see, you know, kind of grab them and flip them over the hip. Uh, I saw a kid get his earring torn out of his ear. So it was, uh, it was pretty interesting. And um, I surrendered. And what that looked like was sitting down on the ground and, uh, and well, actually, when it happened, we were, I, I want to say, before actually getting cuffed, they had us all sitting on the ground, and they did the whole breathalyzer thing, and then uh, it was at that point that they cuffed us. They cuffed me, hands behind my back. They brought me over to the police car, put me in the back of the car uh, with one other guy as a friend of mine, and uh, drove us to jail. And that was my context for surrender. Surrender for me was hands behind your back. Someone's got their their grip on the back of your neck. Uh, they are holding you, forcibly holding you, your head's down. Uh, surrender was associated with shame. Surrender was associated with anger. Surrender was associated with defeat. And surrender was something that really ignited my ego. It was something that um, hurt my ego, that uh, offended my ego in so many different ways. So fast forward years later, and um, I'm in this you know, life coaching environment, and I'm, I'm hearing the word surrender, and it's bringing up all sorts of, of interesting things. So what has shifted, the visual that has shifted for me is surrender no longer is hands behind the back with some metal cuffs on with another entity, another person uh, forcibly telling you what to do. Surrender for me these days is it looks like head up, hands up. You know, as I'm, as, I'm, as I'm speaking right now, my hands are up above me and I'm looking up in the air and it's okay. I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering those things that I don't know. I'm surrendering my ego. I'm surrendering my fight. There's an article that I was reading, kind of prepping for this episode. It's from the website Tiny Buddha, which is a super cool website. The article was called Let Go of Control, How to Learn the Art of Surrender. And they had a, a definition of surrender that I really liked. They say that surrender literally means to stop fighting. Stop fighting with yourself. Stop fighting the universe and the natural flow of things. Stop resisting and pushing against reality. So I want to ask you, and I want you to chew on this for yourself. Where are you fighting in your life? Where are you fighting with yourself again and again and again? Where are you fighting the natural flow of things? Those are all instances in which you can apply this new context of surrender to create a different experience to create a different relationship to those things that you're fighting against. So surrender really is super applicable. This new context of surrender, uh, I should say, is very, very applicable to those folks who are would label themselves control freak. If, if you are a person who knows you like to be in control, then this concept of surrender is really going to change 
a lot of things in your life. It's going to shift a lot of, of, of experiences. You're going to have a more powerful relationship to things in your life in which you can't control. There's a lot of things that you can't control. For example, aging. It's really interesting to me um, to hear people get bent out of shape about birthdays. I have family members who really hate their birthday. And the reality is you're constantly aging. You are. It's just, it's just a thing. You are. Every moment you're getting slightly older. Okay? And it's not going to stop. Right? And so you can stop fighting this reality and create a different experience of, of yourself, for yourself, or you can continue fighting that reality and dislike your birthday each year. That's an example of surrendering something that you cannot control. We want to control things because we want to protect a certain outcome or we want to ensure a certain outcome. You think to yourself that something bad is going to happen if I don't take control of the situation. We control out of fear. That's what that is. You are afraid of a certain outcome. And so you want to take control over everything. Or you are, you are attached to a certain outcome. And you know, again, it goes back to fear. You really don't want something else to happen. So you step in and try to take control. Surrender to the control freak. It looks like stopping your tendency to, to plan things and to predict every single thing that happens and to need to have everything lined up and you know exactly what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. Particularly those things that are totally out of your hands anyway because there's a lot of things that we try to plan and we try to predict that are out of our hands. Surrender carries this attitude of, of faith with it. Faith being you are believing that things are going to work out, even if you're not directly involved in them, even if your hands aren't in the pot, even if you don't have full control, you still believe that things are going to work out because you have faith. And so it's so important to just let go of this idea that surrender means you're quitting because surrender in that context, nobody wants to do that. I get it. I don't want to surrender if I'm thinking I'm going to quit. Instead, I want it, I want you to look at it like this. You are choosing not to concern yourself with the things that are robbing you from health. You are choosing to not concern yourself with the things that are robbing your health. Because that's what happens. That's what happens when you get caught up in things that are outside of your control and you try to plan and you try to predict and you try to paddle upstream. It ends up in some way, shape, or form taking your health away from you. And that can look like your stress goes up. That can look like you have sleepless nights. That can look like anxiety. It can look like a lot of different things. But ultimately, your health is what suffers when you are trying to constantly control things that are out of your hands. There's this, um, there's a spiritual teacher. His name is Sri Chinmoy. I hope I pronounced it correctly. S-R-I-C-H-I-N-M-O-I. And he's a, a spiritual teacher, talked a lot about peace. He was huge on meditation, uh, felt that inner peace could be achieved in a number of ways through things like meditation and art and poetry and sports. He was big into running. And he has this really awesome quote on surrender. He said, surrender is a journey from outer turmoil to the inner peace. I love that quote. The outer turmoil is trying to control those things that you can't control. Trying to control the agendas of other people. Trying to control the actions of other people. Trying to control outcomes that are outside of yourself. When Sarah and I went to Disney World with Maya, If we were very controlling around, let's say, Maya's bedtime, that would have created a very, very different experience for us, you know? 
Because if we were trying to plan and predict when Maya was going to nap in the park and then create our schedule around when her nap was going to happen and how long her nap was going to happen, and then guess what? She's going to choose to nap whenever the hell she wants to choose to nap. That creates an environment of anxiety within us because we're trying so hard to control and to corral something that is out of our hands. And so when we surrender the need for that control, we begin enacting our own inner peace. Like Sri Chinmoy was saying, surrender is a journey from the outer turmoil to the inner peace. So this context of surrender, you know, again, I talk about it so much on the show. I talk about what surrender is. And I just want you to be able to walk away with a new framework, a new frame of mind, actually, to to view surrender in your life. And I really want you to go back and and answer those questions that I asked earlier. Where are you fighting things in your life? Where do you feel like you're paddling upstream? Where are you fighting with yourself again and again and again? Where are you fighting with just the natural flow of things? Because remember, surrender means to stop fighting. Surrender means to just let go. Surrender means to go with the natural flow of things, to, to quit resisting, let things be. And I can guarantee you that there is some place in your life right now that you are fighting and it's exhausting you in some way, shape, or form, and it's robbing you of your health in some way, shape, or form, and that were you to enact some surrender, tap into that surrender, stop focusing on the outer turmoil, and then go inward, you will create not only a new result, but you're going to have a different experience. And that's what this whole thing is about, is about how we experience all of it. And you're trying to control your kids all the time. Your experience of your children is in jeopardy. (laughs) When you're trying to control the stock markets all the time, your experience of life and finances is in jeopardy. There's things that are just outside of our control. There's things that we simply have to surrender and just be like, you know what? Okay. I'm putting my hands up. I'm putting my hands up. I'm saying I'm letting go versus hands behind the back. Because that's not what surrender is. Surrender doesn't mean to quit. Surrender means to let go. And that's why surrender is one of the most challenging things to do. That's why it takes so much courage to surrender because letting go is hard. Letting go is very, very hard. A friend of mine just uh, sent her daughter off to college and, you know, oldest daughter going off to school, away from home. There's a lot of surrender that comes with that. There's a lot of letting go that comes with that. And that's hard. It's so hard. I'm, I'm seeing it in here. I'm watching. It's like, it's an incredibly hard thing to let go. But she has a choice, right? She can hold on and try to control things and create all sorts of interesting experiences for herself. Or you summon that courage and you go deep and you find that strength and you surrender and you let go and you have faith that things are going to work out just fine, whether or not you have your hands in them or not. So I want you to noodle on all that. I want you to, to chew on it. I want you to take it, you know, again, after this episode is complete, just go think about where can I surrender more in my life? Where do I need to surrender? Where is my body telling me? Because my body is always communicating to me. My body is telling me through, you know, aches and pains and anxieties and all sorts of things. Where do I need to surrender? And I want you to go deep and find that courage. Just give it a try. And tell me what happened. Tell me what your experience was like. Tell me what what, uh, the results were. I'd love to know. You can reach out to me on Instagram, Matthew underscore Bivens, or you can hit me up on uh, on email, mattcbivens at gmail.com. And just let's kick off a dialogue around surrender because I can learn from you. I can learn from the moments when you chose to surrender and the moments when you didn't choose to surrender. And you can learn from me. You can totally learn from from my stories and my examples of surrender. Matter of fact, why don't I think right now, 
when I needed to surrender something. It's kind of like a on the spot. And because、uh, there's totally things in my life right now that I can practice what I preach, right? I can walk the talk. So, okay, let me think real quick. So, the one area that has been on my mind for the past few days、uh, is, has to do with finances. And it's, you know, it's funny because finances are a thing that I, I, I work on my relationship towards money and attracting money and generating money. It's, it's been a big, big challenge in my life. So, right now,、uh, there are a couple of, of projects. Um, and outstanding invoices and things like that. Money that on in my, my budget and my spreadsheet、um, is supposed to be coming in this month, but it hasn't yet. And it's giving me this great opportunity to surrender because the controlling part of me wants to call up these entities, call up these people, and stiff arm them to, give me my, to get my money. You know, it's like, hey, listen, we had an agreement, pay up. That's what I want to do. That's the controlling part of me. And、uh, I, want to, I want to say more than simply pay up. But to practice what I'm preaching, what I can do is say, okay, you know what? I'm letting go. I'm going to stop fighting this. And I'm going to trust that things are going to work out without me having to have my hands all wrapped up in them. So, you know, it's the 29th of the month of August. We have. Uh, including today, three days left. And I would love for the money to come in so that I can you know, put it on my, in my budget and spreadsheet and, and count it for August and kind of、uh, keep things rolling. But I'm going to practice sincerely surrendering to it and saying, hey, I've done everything I can. I just need to put my hands up and say, okay, it's out of my hands now. So that's cool. I, I, I dig it.、Um, I like putting these things into practice myself. Uh, because that's, you know, I'm, I'm a man who's big on integrity and, and walking my talk. So there you go. Once again, let me know what,、uh, what surrender has looked like and felt like for you. Matthew underscore Bivens on Instagram or Matt C. Bivens at gmail.com. Let's keep it flowing. I'm so grateful for you hanging out with me today, talking about surrender, talking about this cool topic, and really for just being you, being awesome. And, uh, Having the guts, having the guts to create your own unique version of an abundant, loving life. Yes. All right, I'm Matthew Bivens, and here is to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So, please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.